you feel disconnected in your relationship? Like, I just want to collect, connect. I just don't know how. Today, we have an amazing show for you. We've got the comedy team. You're going to laugh the whole time, and you're going to learn a lot. This is how to connect, how to connect deeply. What are the tools and techniques we need to know, you need to know, in order to have a great connection and great bonding and great closeness. Stay tuned. This is Leah Richheimer for the Ladies Talk Show. Welcome. It's Leah Richheimer for the Ladies Talk Show. This is going to be, we are going to have so much fun, right? Okay, hold on. Wait, let's start. Everybody go around and introduce their themselves. Go ahead. This is our comedy hour comedy team. Go ahead. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rachel Drummond. Hi, I'm Kiki uh, Rabbit. Taylor Lube. Julie Mann. <laughs> and your lips, your net mustache is falling off. Come on, you got to get it on. Oh, wait, get it upside down. Hold on a sec. Like that. Okay. Okay. So here's how this game works. We are going to do, this is comedy hour role playing. And the subject for today is how to really connect. Okay. We all want to connect. Today, we're going to learn how by watching other people not connect. And then we're going to figure it out. You'll see. It's awesome. They go back and forth. And we're going to have two teams. First, who's, t- who's team? Who's starting? And then one's going to be the uh, wife. One's going to be the husband. And we're going to have these a lot of scenarios and problems while you're watching this type in if you have a scenario or a question or you didn't understand something that was going on. Type it in right now and we'll answer it. Street will ask it to me. She's monitoring all Torah anytime. Our favorite, right? Torah anytime. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. What else? I don't know. All the other Spotify, iTunes, whatever. All the platforms. Everybody just type your questions in. Sarit will send them to me and we'll go. But right now we're going to start. We go right very fast, very deep into here. We're going to go with uh, Rachel. You're starting, right? You're the wife or the husband. You are muted. Great. Everybody looks like they're how's muted. That, how's that mustache? Do you want me to use mine? I'll be the husband. Oh, I don't care. Whoever wants to be. But who, who's the team? Who you're teaming with? And the other guys, uh, if you don't mind zipping out for a sec, you'll come on your turn. Okay, hold on a second. Who, who's your... So that's Julie your, and I are going first. Fantastic. Okay. Who's the wife? Because I'm going to ask the question to you. Okay. Uh, Julie is the wife. Okay, fine. Julie, are you ready? Here's the problem that you're having with your husband. And the way this works, I'm going to give you the problem. And then you're going to just like be in the room with him hashing it out. Ready? Okay. You don't feel listened to. You want to share with your husband all about your day, about your job. And you can tell through his body language that he is not, he's like checked out. He's watching his phone, whatever he's doing. He isn't interested. Even he says, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm interested but he's not really interested. So you have a hard time connecting with him because of a feeling like he doesn't really care. Ready, set, go. So I feel like you missed the part where Moisha broke his leg in three places. (laughs) Sorry. This was what? I can't believe this. I have had the the worst day I've ever had. I, I've been in the emergency room with your youngest son for three hours. Where are you? That's bad. Are you playing worse with friends? What it's fantasy going on? football, babe. It's important. Fantasy football. Your family was in the hospital today. I can't believe this. This is like every single day. This is what happens. I know. They're always in the hospital. They're always getting hurt. It's like, do I have to hear all the details every time? I can't believe you don't even care. You don't even care about your yeah, family. I care. I care. Don't say I don't care about my family. Well, you don't. You care more about fantasy football. Well, I mean, that's very pressing. I got a lot of money on this. I cannot believe this. I cannot believe this. I am so sick and tired of this. Every single day, I try and tell you the important things that are going on. I know. It's like enough already. Oh I need a rest. I, 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 I think that's <laughs> by, by the way, Rachel, you nailed it with fantasy football because that is every guy's like thing, and that all is they care perfect. about right now. You what? You're it's what? All they care about right now. <laughs> correct. Correct. Oh correct. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's do a timeout. So, wow, this is so hard. I don't even know where to begin. But Julie, here's the here's I'm going to give you a little bit of things of how to reach or whatever. Um, one thing we know from Hazal, from our sources, that when you speak from the heart, it goes into the heart. 
right? This is like, every, you know, this, but to actually do that when you're like going to kill somebody, so that's pretty hard. Okay. I should say that. Is that politically correct? I say you're going to kill, to choke somebody, whatever. But anyway, okay. You know what I mean? But anyway, here's the thing. When you are in a rage, like when you are just so frustrated, probably the best thing, like this does not seem like a good time to, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's just, yeah, like this. So you want to be able to fi- pick your timing a little better, maybe try and, you know, once he's done with the fantasy football, then you can solve this kind of a problem. It, can everybody who's watching, can you see like this problem at this moment ain't going nowhere? It's not going to be solved. It's just going to get worse and worse and worse. So for this situ- type of situation, save the big heavy duty conversation and so how when I'm going to ask you to go back and, and you know, and uh, fix it up, talk about, say, I want to talk about something serious. And then, Rachel, even though if it's in a little fantasy football for right now, just say, yes, OK, whatever. So that way we can have a clean com- communication. So you're going to say, no, is now a good time to talk. I really have something that's on my mind. And you want to come from your heart, you know, not necessarily how it makes you feel, although, you know, that he's kind of probably roll his eyes at that. He's probably heard it a million times, but in terms of how are we going to be close? I want to be close to you. I want to connect with you. I want, you know, how can we accomplish this so that you don't feel like I'm just giving you another, you know, um, taking all your time. One of the key problems with um, closeness and connecting is that people, it's not like they abuse it. It's kind of like if people love to hear themselves talk. Okay. <laughs> they should, should put those, you know, little guys on my shoulder saying, yes, how about you, Leia? No, but anyway, you know, people love to hear themselves talk. And so if you are like over, over using your husband as your confident, and it's perfectly important and it's a need to use your husband as a confident. But if there's a story or a incident or a thing that happened you know, you don't have to share everything with them. If you limit how much you did. So in other words, if something happened to a kid or whatever, talk to your girlfriend about it for three hours. Oh, the principal said this and I'm really upset and blah, blah, blah. And, and then she did this and, you know, whatever. Talk to your girlfriend for three hours. When you bring it to your husband, talk to him, you know, say, this is what happened. It was really annoying. And they'll say, oh yeah, okay, fine. Save your big long talks with him. You know, he can probably do couple a week, maybe one a week. It depends on the husband, two a week, three a week. You know, you, it depends on the husband and what your relationship with him. And the, and, and there's a key to connecting. I'm going to give you in a second that will it, it can also oh. shift this. But for you to, um, uh, I'm ready, I'm going to say ready, set, go. And you're going to go back to him and you're going to, you know, you uh, first make sure it's the right time to talk and then do it right from your heart. And then I'll give you the secret right after you go. Okay, go. Hey, um, well, I'm sorry. Are you busy right now? I'm so sorry. I forgot to check. You're on your phone. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you need me to be not busy right now? Well, finish what you're doing. There's something I, I there's something kind of important I wanted to talk to you about. And by the way, I, something I wanted to talk to you about sounds like you're going to go like this. So always say oh. there's something I want to ask you about. Oh, there's something I, oops, sorry. I mean, secret. By, by something I want to talk right. to you about, it means it's something I want to ask you. Your, your kind of your expert opinion. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Well, but I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm waiting. I'm, 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 I'm on your time. So I'm here. I'm, I'm here. Thank you so much for making time for me. Yeah. So. Um, I got called into the principal again today because, uh, I know, I know I've already, we've, I've already dealt with it. I just, I I need your feedback and, and again, your wisdom, because you're so good with this stuff and you really can show me parts that I'm, I'm, I'm missing when it comes to parenting. Uh, David, uh, poked another kid in the eye with a pencil. Oh, Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh. Okay. it was, a, it was, a, it was I'm a sorry, Moshe time. at the hospital was like, <laughs> okay, oh. well, okay. It, I, I mean, I think I don't, he said it was an accident, but because it was the second time the teacher thinks it uh, deliberate, but should we just trust David then? I'm assuming that's what you're saying. I mean, right. he's a kid who hasn't poked another kid. I mean, come on, you probably poked your fair share of kids in the eye with pencils in school. I didn't, but yeah, yeah, okay. But I again I defer to you because you again bring in the 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 richness that I, I can't always access on my own. So okay. I'm not worried. 
okay, well then I'm not going to be worried either. I okay. mean, <laughs> this, well, hold on a second. Don't you think she should get the best wife ever thing for, you know what I'm saying? It's, it, she's not letting him trample her. She's getting her opinion out, but she's having a, there's this a, a deference and a humility, which is people think, Oh, that's too, that comes across weak. Did that that didn't come across weak to me. To me, that like was empowering, like inspiring, like how generous a woman could be, how kind a woman could be. And you can see this is what leads to closeness, this kind of respect, whatever a woman thinks she needs respect. Look, we, uh, we've got 65 years of women's movement, whatever. And I, you know, I'll, I, I fight for equality. But in the home, a man needs respect more than anything in the world, more like oxygen. And a woman needs something far more important. And as soon as I'm going to say, you're like, hmm, a woman needs connection. A woman needs to feel heard and connected and gotten and understood way more than she needs respect. She needs respect too. Don't get me wrong, but I'm saying a man needs it like, like oxygen. If he doesn't get it, he'll keep fighting for it and fighting for it and trying to be, you know, whatever. And it brings out the worst in a man when he doesn't get the respect he needs. On the other hand, for a woman, if a woman doesn't get the connection she needs, she feels lonely and like, what, what's the point in all this work I'm doing to raise this family or to br- make my husband happy. So connection is very, very crucial. And that's exactly why we're here today. Now, I, I, first of all, I just have to commend you, Julie, for how you approach it. First of all, you did a great job, Rachel. That was hysterical. Um, sort of like, whoa, I'm poking in the eye. No problem. Where's my pencil? Um, but anyway, but um, are you always surprised though by the things that they're fine with? Who? The, yeah, yeah. That's, that's actually true. The things yes. they get upset about, I'm like, oh, okay. That didn't even bother me. And then something I think is the end of the world. And he's like, no, it's I'm a kid. He's got two eyes. Yes. Like, <laughs> yes, he's got another one. By, uh, by <laughs> the way, Leia, the Instagrammers and Facebookers are loving Julie, but I think they just love the fact that she was so. I mean, I, I don't. I was trying to imagine myself doing that with my husband, and I'm like, oh my god, I think I would just choke up after the first line of, oh, I really, really value. Oh, oh yeah, poking the eyes. Yeah, we all do that. That's great. Hello, <laughs> 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 oh, but but you can wait, wait, now listen. Poking uh, poking a pencil in the eye might be a different scenario, but who Julie was being during that? That just kind of a differential, whatever. People in business, people would say, oh, that's a little bit of a weakness. She should stand up for her own thoughts and whatever. And and I hear that. There's a place for that. But with her husband, you are going to see his whole desire to be close to her and to uh, bond with her and and, and, uh, to to feel a togetherness with her. When when you do that, there's something yummy for a a husband. He just feels so much respect. And you, you laid it on very thick. But he didn't, it didn't even bother. You can lay on that kind of stuff as thick as you want, thicker, thicker, thicker. The guy won't get it. He'll just, he'll, he'll just be eating it up, like whatever. And you'll see that he'll do things like, oh my goodness, he, he changed the toilet paper roll. <laughs> you know, he's like, hello. You know, it, it will bring out the best in your husband. This is, again, this is a try this at home. This isn't like something I'm saying, damn it, it, try this at home. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, that's also great. But we have a 3,000-year-old track record of support, of, of, of um, uh, success, that what makes a man thrive and feel close to his wife is when she shows him enormous amounts of respect, treats him like a king, then he always will treat her like a queen. That's guaranteed. Okay, fantastic. Now, uh, let's go to the next t- team. But for before you guys go, I just... Uh, oh, they already go. Uh, no, they, uh, okay. Yeah, you can uh, all come in. I just want to give you the, the one of the key tech secrets to connection that I said I was going to share, and that is listening. It's the most unforgot. It's the most was uh, unfor- most forgotten. It's the most forgotten skill that we have because we, we you know, so much. Your husband comes home. What, what's new, dear? Nothing. How is work? Fine. Well, you know, the g- guys just clam up and they don't pour out and share their days or their lives like women do. It's kind of natural to us. Women were given 10 parts of speech, whatever it is, nine tenths of speech, whatever. But, but if a woman listens to her husband more and probes and he says, Oh, nothing. Well, didn't you have some report you were working on last week? How did that go? You know, probe and probe and probe and do the best to be an active listener to your husband. That's one of the secret, most beautiful ways to connect deeply. Try it at home. Okay, good. Let's go to the next team. Okay, who's the husband? Who's the wife? Okay, good. Um, okay, fine. So Siggy, you're Siggy's the husband. Taylor, you ready for your challenge? Okay, here it is. Your husband promised to go with you for an evening walk, which you were looking forward to, and you really need just that 
connection. When it came time for the outing, he claimed he was just too exhausted. Go. So you're really too exhausted? You know, I saw that you managed to pick up your phone and check out what was going on with the Major League Baseball lockout. Just so tired. But what made you so tired? Where Did you actually even stand today? <sighs> the office? Were you not sitting down at the office just like all day? Honey, I'm like tuning you out. It's like you're part of the dream, you know, when the person's speaking and you're like already dreaming. You're like kind of the voice in my dream right now because I'm like already done for the day and I just want to. Nothing it feels more like, like my home. dream than finding out that my husband is tuning me out. I'm not tuning you out. It's just like I'm already like entering that REM. Do you know what I mean? Like it's I'm already coming into it. So it's like the sleep is already it's coming on any second. Or like I really do the Boston Marathon. I'm talking about taking a few blocks around just like we do so we can actually talk and I can be out of the house for a minute. I'm just like not feeling moving my body because like I don't have the energy because I really am like already kind of asleep. It wouldn't even be safe to go walking right now. It wouldn't like, be safe to go walking. Why don't you listen to me for one time? You promised to do this. The thing is, is like, I worked walk. really hard. I took care of the kids. I worked at the office today. Like I came home and like when I was cooking things. Dinner. And Rifki was asking me to help with her homework, you know, like sort of great <laughs> math. Like, you know, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> wow. The, the other thing, the thing that's so scary is this, like, see, it feels so normal, like, whatever. So yeah. I want to hear from you guys uh, from our audience. I want you to type in what do you think the solution is? Like, well, how do you get out of this? It, it, tell me, Sarit, if anyone answers while I'm doing this. Okay, how do you get out of this situation? So here's the thing. First of all, you, uh, you're adorable with this falling asleep. Like I was going <laughs> to, I was going to get my, my boxing glove. Um, is that, um, so here's the thing. There was such an, I know Taylor that, you know, you were meant to do, but you were on complete attack mode, right? Complete attack mode. I mean, that's how any woman would be when faced with that thing, especially if he promised he'd take you, go with you and he's not. So can you think of, and, and do, uh, tell me if we get anything in, Sarit, I want to, I want to hear what everybody thinks. Um, it is it when you are a um, attacking, oh, it's it also, like I said before, it's a matter of timing, like before you timed it and you had, um, you know, if, if you, at the right time, if you say the right thing, it will go in. And if it's the wrong time, it for sure won't go in. And right now he's falling asleep. So it's not going to go in. However, there is a way to approach it. Again, we want to go back to what Hazal said, which is uh, our sages say, which is if you speak from the heart, it goes to the heart. So when you're mad, we've all been there, done that, right? So it's not, it's not going to go in. But if you were to say, you know, okay, time, time out. I get it. You're tired. Listen, I, I really need to talk to you. I mean, I, you know, and I don't even have anything really vital to say. I just need that connection with you at this moment. Is that possible? I mean, can you just, you know, we won't do our regular three rounds. We'll do one round or we'll do two rounds or something like that. I just really need it at the moment. If you express your needs from your heart, it's almost hard for them to resist. It's not screaming and ye yelling and pushing them away and getting defensive. Okay, ready? Go ahead, Taylor. Try it again. Oh gosh, you look really tired. Oh, I'm so tired. Um, look, I know we were supposed to go on our walk. Ah, oh, right, the walk, the walk, the walk. But you know, we Ooh. only have your mom here to help with the baby for just a few more weeks. Oh, honey, you might, you might need to like push me in a stroller right now. I'm so exhausted. Well, it would just be nice to be able to just have a little stroll with you you know just oh 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 should we watch that show we like and and sit on the couch and connect that way oh yes that would be good and then maybe tomorrow we can walk a little further because there's a few things i need to talk to you about and i just miss you um miss you too <laughs> a long day when you don't have anybody over the age of five talking to yeah. us so laughing yeah. and I like baseball too you know we can talk about what's going on and all right well would you want to would, you're cool to talk about baseball on this walk of course oh all right well get your coat get your coat <laughs> okay that was great guys <laughs> very good by the way we had on um instagram people saying um, um taylor is feisty and that they need to hire a husband walker 
Somebody <laughs> suggested hire someone to walk the husband, or maybe get scooters to ride together. Husband and wife scooters. That might be a new thing. Oh, scooters. Um, <laughs> yeah, scooter. Leia. Somebody did. Somebody did comment that my hubby tells me on Facebook. My hubby tells me way more details about his day than I do, and he gets annoyed when I sum things up without details. So I guess it's a stereotype busted. Meaning it's the opposite of what you just did, that it's not always the woman telling. Fantastic. So actually yeah. I've had that before. What? So on that situation, and I think that might be account as much as 20 percent of the population. I'm not sure where the guy talks more about what his day and everything like that. If that works for you, you're good to go. If you feel like you don't have you want his ear more, you want his confidence, confidence. How do, what is a comp? What's past tense of you want him to be your confidant? There, okay. Confidant. <laughs> yes, I was right. just gonna what, say confidant. Yeah, confidant. <laughs> um, so if you want him to be more that, and you want him to listen more, and this is who I'm speaking to. I don't know what her name is, but anyway, whatever is that you um, uh, it's something you can. Sh- Share with him again from your heart. And you just say, you know, I just want to talk to you about something. I love hearing about your day, even if it's challenging for you. And even if it's hard and you've got a million things else on your mind, but you're being a good wife and you're listening to him, which every husband needs like oxygen, not as much as he needs to be respected, but maybe close second is just feeling like you're with him and you're, you care about the things that he cares about. Uh, even whether it's baseball, you see how the, the husband's eye, Siggy's eyes lit up when, when he said, Oh, we can talk about baseball. Oh, I'm going, let's get your on you know so uh it's very very crucial but if you are feeling a lack like you don't feel like you get to share as much with him as he's sharing with you then there's two things one is maybe get another you know to have get your sister your mother your a good friend somebody else who could also be a confident who can make you feel better like oh at least i got it out of my system um and then the other thing is to have a really good heart-to-heart conversation with them and say you know i love listening to every you know your day or whatever but i also realized that sometimes i feel like I don't get a chance to give you and share my life enough with you. I don't know how we want to do this, you know, logistically. I mean, do, I, I get, I hope you get this and I hope we can find out a solution, but maybe, you know, when we start talking, when we get walk out the door, instead of you starting to talk and telling your thing, maybe I should always start, do a short thing and then turn it over to you. But at least I get the first five minutes and I know, you know, in the course of my day, when I'm thinking if we're talking or not, that I'm going to have that five minutes, would that be okay with you? Or do you have other ideas? and brainstorm with it. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Let's go to the next, get the te- next team up. Let's go to the next scenario. So Taylor, if you say Taylor can stay on and be hubby and I'll be wife, just so we switch up the teams this round. Okay. All right. Fine. Okay. Great. So who's now who's has, Oh, she's husband. husband. Okay, fine. Okay. Here's the next scenario. You ready, Rachel? Yeah. Okay. Your husband travels often for his job and he doesn't communicate much with you during his time away, like he flies off to Hong Kong or wherever, and he doesn't communicate. He says he's too busy and on different time zones. So it's too complicated. And, you know, you just have to understand this is my job. This is what I do. You feel slightly slighted and that you're not a priority in his life. Rachel, go. Hey, welcome home. (sighs) Hi, Shanghai was really good. Long. I didn't ask, but I haven't heard from you since Tuesday. Oh, yeah, babe. I didn't even know if you made your flight or not. Look, I'm here now. I obviously made it. Yeah, but I didn't. I hardly heard from you your whole trip. I mean, I don't know anything about. I was trying to update you on the kids and what was going on with my mom, and I never I, heard back from you. I know, but you know, and then I went. You know, when I went by, you know, Mumbai before that, and that's twelve and a half hours ahead. You know, and how am I supposed to do that? Like, I happen to know you are always on your phone. You have it in your hand right now. I have it in my, uh, cause I got to check in from the office. Let them know that I've made it back. I, but it's like, uh, it's not like you're, you're not hearing from me. You're getting my messages. I'm just not getting, I mean, I, I, I require very little. Well, it's it like says, a, hi, how are you? On your end, it says delivered. I mean, uh, you look, you want me to bring, uh, I got to get over there. I, uh, you know, when I'm over there with my management consulting, I'm just saving companies. And that requires a lot of time. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I forgot. I to don't think just right. checking back in with me would take away from your grand gestures of saving the city. A minute is a minute. Time is money. Yeah. I bet superheroes text their wives back. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love this. Adorable, adorable Superman. 
<laughs> okay. So uh, he, he, it, it, that was like, this is just so typical. Okay. So here's the thing. Um, there's a, what do you call it? I, I mean, I don't know if you guys can listen. It's very hard when you're the player to, to see, but can, can, can everybody who's watching, can you see sort of there's this, this um, confrontational attitude going on there? It's this, you know, I mean, that's what you're supposed to do. It's either, you know, the, then she's going to fix it or whatever, but I'm just saying, but you, it just is so typical. So there's, you know, when you're starting the tone of how the conversation goes can make a world of difference, whether he can even hear what you have to say. So mm-hmm. what I want, you to do Rachel I want you to go back in and do it but do it from the point of view of it's not just your problem you're mad at him because you have a problem and he needs to fix himself but has to can you do it with her you know him uh in a way that you're getting him on side like how, what do we do about this I I feel neglect you know it makes me I know you love me I know you're not trying to make me feel neglected I know you're not trying to hurt me or whatever but this the way the logistics are set up in our life hurts, makes me feel badly. What can we do about it to fix it? You understand the difference? Like it's kind of, instead of you, him being here and you being here, it's like you're on the same side trying to, trying to fix it. So work on your tone a little bit. And also, um, well, I'll give you one secret, but I'll tell it after. Okay, go ahead. Hey, um, how was your trip? Oh gosh. It was really long, but I'm really glad to be back. I'll tell you that. I'm glad you're back too. Um, my my experience of your trip was bad. And I think maybe next time I need your help to figure out how to make it better. It was bad? Why was my trip bad for you? Because I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't hear from you a lot. And I know you're so busy and you're like saving companies. And I respect the heck out of what you're doing. But I just am like kind of left adrift. Like where? where's my partner you know like I'm just with the toddlers all day and you know what you're right I I need to be better because that doesn't take much time and it makes you feel better and then at least we have that little even when I'm halfway across the world I have a like a tiny little connection with you you know yeah tiny it's just like I can't believe what Taylor what allowed you to switch so quick um, what, what way was she being that made your heart soft? That it wasn't nagging that, that, that she just missed me, Aww. you know? <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. And then, and feeling like, yeah, I'm with people that I don't necessarily always want to be with all day long and I do love her. So yeah, it would be nice to be able to check in in the middle of all the ruckus, you know? <laughs> wow. So for, for those of you who get it that easy, good on you. For people who have it a little bit more challenging, <laughs> this is actually a time for brainstorming. So, you know, if he said, he said, well, I just, I, I can't see a way to make it work or whatever, you know, then you can brainstorm. Well, how about if I call text you and say, thinking of you, and all you need to do is put a thumbs up or you need to send me a smiley face. Would that work for you? You're like, no, that'll just distract me. It'll make me annoyed and I'll forget. And I won't be able, you know how you can't mark text as unread or whatever. Maybe they'll fix that one day. That really annoys is annoying. But anyway, you know, you, but to, so he says, no. So then you say, brainstorm other ideas. How about if you, um, I email you or how about if I, you know, I just leave you a little voice note. And then you leave me another voice note. Would that work for you? Then, and if I'm sleeping, I'll turn my phone off so you can leave a voice note in the middle of the night, your time, Shanghai time, and I'll get it when I wake up in the morning. It'll at least just make me feel connected to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's a brainstorming. <clears throat> okay. And then the second, the second secret, I've got three secrets. I'm giving you the second one. The second secret is if you can possibly make connection joyful. So not every communication, not every, you know, and if you're doing logistics and whatever, it can be, um, uh, it, it doesn't all have to be joyful. But for instance, there's a way to say something, you know, oh, the trash needs to be done, you know not so joyful. If you say something like, oh, the kitchen smells kind of funny and we had an agreement about who was going to do the trash, who, who shall remain nameless or something like that. You know, there's a way and a tone and a way to have 
a lot of the interactions that are just mundane, regular, boring, whatever, to make them lighthearted and joyful. So it's just something to focus on. It's not something you have to make change, do radical changes in your life. However, before something comes out of your mouth, think, is this joyful and going to make my husband feel closer to me? Or is this something that's going to come across as nagging and like, uh, you can nag the same way by saying, you know, uh, uh, you, you didn't call today. Right. That's one way of reminding him. And the other is like, I missed you today. I would have loved to hear from you. You know, and one's like going to be effective and one's not. OK, let's go to the next team. Go to the next area. Thanks. By way, by the way, awesome. Leah, yeah. so, so some some of just the comments that were coming in, it might be obviously for the other um, scenarios. But someone said, and we love our women. We love our ladies. She should go away on a girl's trip or spa getaway and do the same to him. <laughs> ah! <laughs> so not not why it's the uh, the best uh, ladies uh, talk show wife ever, but <laughs> but definitely vindictive. Or someone said, or become a flight attendant and she'll see him more. There, there you go. <laughs> Never. Great comments. Um, also, Thank somebody you. said men always think watching something together is quality time. And unfortunately, I get that also. Great I used catch. to have that. My husband and my husband always felt like, okay, let's go, you know, watch a movie or we'll do this. And I'm thinking, but we're not really talking then at all. Yeah. So we're not, we're just, we could basically be doing that on our own. Right. And right. there's like it's no good. difference, but they really feel that it's spending quality time together when they do that. So how do you kind of. It's fantastic. And first of all, whoever said, sent that in. Awesome comment. I thought of it while it was going on. And I forgot to come back to it. So I'm really glad you guys are paying attention. Really appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, that. So I think I would balance it out. Like if, men do think that's bonding and connecting. I've heard that a lot, a ton. And so um, you have to balance it out. Say, okay, great. And then another time, you know, when he says, okay, let's watch a movie to be bond, you know, say, you know, actually I have, so, I have a lot of schmoozing to do. Can we do this instead? We watch seven movies in a row now, let's, you know, whatever, let's do this this night, you know, so completely great point. Glad you brought it up. Awesome. Okay. Let's go to the next scenario. We're good. I can go. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> this is uh, who's the man. Okay. So Julie's the man. Okay. Siggy, I'm going to give you your scenario. You ready? Okay. You had major dental procedure done today. And later in the evening, your husband comes home and he expects the routine. Same as always. He, you know, why aren't the kids bathed? Why isn't it? What's this? What we're getting, we're having fish chips. What are those things called? Fish, not fish chips. What am I? <laughs> yes. Fish sticks. Fish sticks. We're having fish sticks again, you know, for the third night in a row. Um, and he didn't even ask you how your dental procedure went. Go. Uh, oh wait okay okay Ooh. what is going on here the kids are running around like wild animals in, in this the house smells fishy are we having those cod Honey, flakes you, again did you look at our joint calendar today because do you remember what i had Ooh, hoo, hint hint it's over here and it really hurts. Use your words. I can't understand you. You're just making a moaning sound. And can't you drool time. a little? Drool a little. I mean, <laughs> really having a hard time because I got oh, dental. Get away from the food. You're drooling I got the a, food. I got a dental procedure today and it really hurts. You got a what? A dental procedure. A dental <laughs> procedure. Okay. Yes, did, I've been telling you about this for weeks. This is an outpatient surgery, right? No, I was under. I was yeah, totally you got, under. You got, yeah, yeah, but you're here now. So why aren't what what's happening? What's it, why is everything in really uh, really unsympathetic right now? It really hurts. They wired my jaw shut, and I can't speak. I can't. You're eat. speaking at me a lot. There's not a lot of yeah, speaking yeah, coming at me. By the way, by the way, Rachel, I think the man is right now feeling like they obviously didn't wire her jaw shut enough. <laughs> yeah. There's too much talking coming out of your mouth. <laughs> I think we need a divorce. <laughs> so, hello. No, okay. All right. So, time out. Let's go. Okay. So, here's this. This is great. Oh, your mustache is fine. Julie, you need more glue. Come on. Or staple it on something. Yeah. Okay. So, why are you shut? Why are you shut? What did you say? What? Why are you shut? Now, why are you I'm going to wire the mustache okay. to my face. So, here's the thing with this one. So, again, <clears throat> starting that we're talking about tone here total confrontational um uh, understandably right like hello she's in pain or whatever and he has a hell of a heck of a heck of a nerve to whatever so for this situation we have to um uh on this kind of a thing it might be 
like the best scenario is to give your husband heads up about stuff. Like it feels annoying because you put it on the, whatever the family calendar you um, you know, he, he comes home and you're like, uh, and he doesn't even remember, but these are kind of things that are important to us and that we're going through, we think are so obvious and we get so furious when our husband doesn't, it doesn't, isn't on page, isn't, doesn't understand, doesn't get it, isn't cluey about what's going on with us. This is a male and a female thing. And here's the solution that just will solve all of your problems. Text him, by the way, I'm on the way to the dentist office. By the way, I just finished my dental surgery. He's on his way home and you know, he's, you know, text I'm coming home or you don't know when he's coming home, whatever. By the way, when you walk in the door, we're having fish sticks and the kids are a disaster. And can you please bathe them? Because I had dental surgery today. Give for, what is it? Forewarned is for shadowed. What is Forearmed. Thank you. <laughs> She's got a mute. Forearmed. I could read your lips. Okay. For, forewarned is forearmed. So in other words, if you prep him with all these texts, wait a minute, Leah, are you telling me I got to treat him like a baby? Like he can't even be adult enough for, to like read the calendar and to be thoughtful enough. Like I've got to remind him that I'm having surgery. That's so annoying. I get it. He should do the same thing with you. If he goes and he gets dental surgery and you're frazzled and you have a big, you know, uh, uh, your annual conference at your uh, business or you're having a teacher parent thing that night and you have, or you've, you know, it's midterms, whatever you're doing. And he has his meeting that he wants you to be aware of. He should also text you forewarns, foreshadow, you know, what, what do you call, you know, just like warning texts to help ease these things instead of waiting for the 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 uh, him to neglect you and feeling bad about it and yelling at him which makes you right and we all want to be right right rather than that set him up for success set him up for success by pre telling him all of the things and then he comes and then he knows get it okay very good yeah you 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 had a question or we're good Okay, fine. Okay, we'll save it for after. Um, okay, so fine. So ready, you, Siggy, you can go ahead again. And again, you've pre-warned him and you've set him up for that. And he, let's say he still didn't remember, just so that you can, again, you want to come in with a soft tone and you want, in this situation, he should have a lot of sympathy for you and should jump in. I don't care how exhausted he is. I don't care how, you know, and some men won't rise to the occasion, but I'll tell you this much. They will much more rise to the occasion. If you come with them a soft tone and a, I, you know, help, I, I need help. than he would, if you're wagging your finger that he's not helping go. Oh, honey, did you get my voice memos and my texts? I had yeah, 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 you, you blew up my phone. You I had the surgery. I know I told you only 17 times. I just wasn't sure if you'd remember. And I really <laughs> would love if you can help me. Yeah, I I, I already know that I have uh, to do everything I was, tonight. And I was, I was thinking you, you could put the kids to sleep and give them the food and, and bathe them and then maybe give me a little back massage or something. Okay, uh, one thing at a time. Okay, you're yeah. asking a lot right now, but um, I'm gonna put the kids in the car. We're gonna go get drive through. Okay. And, okay. Um, and then I think you know we're just gonna skip bath tonight. I mean they're not. Okay. They're not I, I, okay. They don't smell that bad. I do uh, think Leia. <laughs> I, I do think Layla. It smells like a little bit. If you could do her. I'm Leia. Hello. Layla. Layla. Okay. Layla. Layla. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. We'll let that. She's work. only five. Well, she's Leia. Smell fine, but she's this only money, five. Okay. If you could just do a little, just like a little rinse off. Very. Uh, well, okay. I'll you know what? Not, we don't even. Have, that dry shampoo, but but really, can we just do one thing at a time? I, I yeah, we. Well, you know what? You don't even have to do the massage. It's okay. Wow. Okay. You are you. Are you on a lot of drugs? Are you on a lot of drugs? You're very emotional. It's really hard. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you go? Why don't why not, go go? Yeah. Get some ice and lay down. Can we go watch TV in bed? Yeah. Do that. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, okay, okay I'll see. You'll be good in the morning, though, right? <laughs> I can't say for sure, but I'll text you and I'll let you know. All right. Thank you. That's yeah. good. Yay. Great job, guys. Okay. Fantastic. That was really great. I, I somehow, it's amazing. The same communication 
it just watching it. The other one was like hard to watch. And you was like, no, you know, this one you want, you felt engaged. Like you wanted to even if, as an outsider wanted to feel clo be closer to what was ever the connection that was going on there. So you just, um, just in terms of your own life, when you're dealing with your own husband, you know, if you can visualize like, like being, you know, being outside of yourselves and what's going to create that closeness. So I'm going to give you the, another secret to closeness. And that is to really understand your own needs. Cause she, Siggy, obviously had very specific needs here, logistic needs about getting the kids ready, but also emotional needs of feeling supported. So a lot of times we get so confused between our needs and our wants, and I'll explain both quickly, um, that we ask for both. You know, we're like, we need our we needs and our need, need, we, 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 we want to get our needs met. We want to get our wants met. And so we're bombarding them with a thousand things. In this scenario, if a woman can figure out what her needs are, um, and actually there's a whole section, this is my book, uh, The Marriage Secrets, I, all the proceeds go for keep, you know, making peace in the home. So I get no money by pushing my book. Uh, but there is a whole chapter here on getting your needs met. And what it means is that, you know, first you write down all of your wants and your needs, and then you circle only the needs and what's really deeply important to you. It's a very powerful exercise. Once a woman knows what her needs are, so this show is about connecting, and once a woman knows what her needs are, instead of making her husband run around like a chicken with his head cut off, trying to, you know, get provided with this and that, and I want that, you know, she's like, you know, what? all I really want is when he got, walks in the door, him to put his phone down and talk to me, <laughs> you know, or all I really want is for him to, you know, get to work on time or, you know, a woman has some very that's maybe too uh, controlling, but I, I'm thinking about, I can't think of a good example right now, but basically a woman has very deep emotional needs and spiritual needs. And if she gets those met, a lot of the other things that she wants, she doesn't need them. She wants them. A lot of those wants just fall by the wayside because her deep needs are met. Very powerful way to connect. Okay. Yeah. What if you disagree? Like sometimes like maybe what you'll want is the emotional thing and you don't like they do the needs. They'll make the dinner and they'll take care of the baby. But you really just wanted some like empathy and love. But like in their minds, that wasn't really the need. That was more the want. So that's why God gave you your mouth so you can sell them. <laughs> you can say, thank you for doing the logistics. Thanks for taking care of the kids or whatever. You know what I really need? I need you to say, oh, you poor thing. <laughs> you know, I need you to, I need you to just tell me how, what a great wife I am that in the middle of getting my job, you know, getting my dental surgery or whatever, the kids are still alive. You know, the, <laughs> you know, the, the, uh, there is fish sticks, even though everybody hates them or maybe people like them and stuff, but you know, whatever it is, you can ask for that directly. If you do that in a warm, yummy way, it's fine. If you demand it like you didn't give it to me and that's why I'm asking for it, it won't go well. But if you're like, you know what? I appreciate everything you did. Shower the yum and then say, but if you could just tell me how great I am or how wonderful I am or how good I look, even with my jaw at 400 sizes bigger than it should be, you know, so ask for it. It's a fantastic question. Good. Okay. Any questions? We go to the next team. Next team. Sarit, you good? Okay, fine. <laughs> okay, next scenario. Who's the husband? Who's the wife? I forget. I'm mixed up. Who is the? Okay, Rachel's the husband. You ready, Taylor, for your scenario? Mm -hmm. Okay. You had major ma major um, issues at work. Kind of run a run in with your boss, and your husband and your husband's not supportive and doesn't take the time to help you get over it. Like he just like like okay, fine. He just kind of is very dismissive of you and you feel not connected. Again, this show is about connection. So you feel not connected to him because he doesn't feel like he cares about something that dramatic that happened to you today. You're on. You know that Darren got a promotion today? Oh, good for him. Good for Darren? Yeah. Darren's good been guy. at the firm for two years less than I have. Yeah, well... Yeah, but you don't you remember me talking to you? We had a whole talk about how it was finally my turn. I was supposed to be promoted last year to partner, and then it went yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, I remember and that. Like COVID and yeah, COVID made everything crazy. Right, but I well, waited tell Darren uh, congratulations for me. I should send a card with you when you go in tomorrow. <laughs> oh, tell Darren congratulations. Oh, that's gonna really help my life. Yeah, you know how hard I worked for that promotion, honey. I know, but all that, that doesn't mean because you don't get the promotion, you know, that work was for nothing. You did the work, you did the work. Do the work, but look, but, but because I'm a woman, I don't get to move ahead. But would you not work as hard if you didn't want a promotion? Probably not. What? 
I mean, what's the, what, right? if I'm just going to be a, like a hamster in the wheel and I never get to be acknowledged for what I want to do. It's look, work. Work, is work. work. You work for the sake of why, work. Why are you team Darren? I'm right? not. I'm just happy for the guy. I like him. We had a beer that why one time. team wife. I'm, I'm, I'm married team wife. I, you're my favorite. Except for when Darren gets the promotion. I'd be way more excited if you got the promotion. Oh yeah. Right. Forget yeah, the card. I'll, I'm I'll not even sending the card. Yeah. God. Yeah. You've really, really shown. I could feel it. Are you so uh, mad at me? I didn't give him the promotion. No, but you cheered him on. And also you play basketball with my boss. What does he say? Yeah, he's good. He's really good at, uh, he's got a three pointer. I I've been wanting to develop my three pointer for a while. I don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good husband. I mean, such a good, good acting of the husband. Such a bad it. husband. I promise, no joke. If any of us are married to Rachel. <laughs> yeah, out the window with that one. Okay, so let's, <laughs> wow. This is like, okay. So you got a case, T- Taylor, Taylor, you got a case. You got a case. So for this kind of a situation, it's, it's, um, it's, it's painful, actually. It's painful to not be heard, not be gotten. And there's one thing a woman really, really needs, and that's loyalty. Husband needs it also, but it's it's crucial in a in a marriage to have that kind of loyalty. And when there's a even a little inkling of disloyalty, it 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 cuts, gets us into a place that's so deep and painful. And you guys should know that as the wife, the more loyalty you're able to be to your husband, the more loyal he'll be to you, but you should just realize his comfort and his peace in his life is dependent on your level of loyalty. Now we're taking it from the other side and we're seeing how painful it is to have, feel that disloyalty. Um, And there's only one way to reach Rachel, husband, Rachel (laughs) in this and that is to burst into tears. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that, that would work. Um, no, is to, is to, um, I think if you couch what you're going to say to him before you say the news, like it's so obvious to you when you said, what was his name? Darren, Darren got a promotion. Was it Darren? I, I, don't know. I can't remember from 30 seconds ago. Thank you. Uh, you know, if, 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 um, if you were to couch, if you were to say Darren got a promotion without t- keying him in to what you're thinking and what you're going through and what your emotions are, he can have a reaction like, oh, that's great. He doesn't know. So when you're giving a communication and you're trying to have connection and closeness, the best way is to sort of couch what you're saying in a context. So the context would go something like this. I'm really, really upset. I feel wounded and hurt. And I really need support from you because something happened at work today that really, I just don't know how to get over. I mean, I just feel I'm crushed. I really, your wife is crushed. And he's like, what, what is it? And then you say, Darren got the promotion. And then his whole like Say, you know, a guy like, you know, those damsel in distress where they're tied to the, these are like the 1920s old clip movies where they tie the woman to the train tracks and the guy comes rescuing. Oh, wait, you got the mustaches. You know, the guy comes and rescues her. Whatever. Men love to be rush in and save the day. You know, that's why, you know, I don't know. It, it, I think it's a beautiful thing when men come and save their wives from spiders, because of course we all know that spiders, you know, can actually kill you and two seconds flat. They're so, you know, they grow, they can grow bigger and bigger as you, as you approach them. them, as you approach them. Yes, they <laughs> definitely, and they can run at your feet. And yeah, they're very, very dangerous. So Grab men lo- yeah, that's right. Men with hairy legs. Thank you. What <laughs> men love to come in and rescue. And so you, again, this is again, before you get, deliver news like this, preempt how it's going to go. Let's go again. Taylor, you're up. Hi. Hey. So I was wondering if we could maybe go sit out on the stoop and eat some ice cream because my day was a little hard. I love ice cream, but I don't like that your day was hard. I'm sorry. No, I don't like it either. Uh, There's only a little bit of chocolate left. Can I have it all? You can have it all, but I get the vanilla. Okay. Okay. (laughs) That Um, was a great start, Taylor. That was, isn't that yum? 
I mean, besides the ice cream, but you know, it was a yummy opening. Okay, go ahead. Hey, remember when um, you had worked so hard on that um, Danvers deal that you had worked on for like six months? Yeah. Really thought that you were going to get the VP job from that. And they went with Kayla instead. Yeah. Well, I had kind of this, I had the same thing happened. Darren got the promotion oh. today. Darren? Darren. I I like that guy. Dead to me now. What? No, dead to oh. me. That's right. Oh. I mean, he's been yeah. a class. It was just because they went to the country club together that they can, they can. Okay. So hold on. I just have to, what allowed you to switch, Rachel? We just got to analyze this. That was amazing. Yes, she made it all about me. Uh, <laughs> oh, you mean because of the Danvers thing? Yeah. And you mean it made, that, it made it all relatable. That pain. Yeah. Also, she said she was upset, you know upset enough to have ice cream so i've got rewards i'm on an emotional roller coaster right? <laughs> there you go. okay very good okay that was gorgeously done we only have time for one last uh, thing but guys th- th- everybody was watching did you just like watch that like the first one was just like this battle and the second one was like this touching moment like like again i myself in the first one i was kind of like backing off like whoa you know and in this one when they were interacting i felt found myself like getting closer so that's a little bit of a clue clue cue to us when we're having an interaction with our spouse to sort of see it from the outside of like what's going to draw when when that yumminess is there we can all feel it. We know what that looks like. So that's what we want to rec- replicate. That's why we do these role plays because it, 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 it's so crystal clear what uh, tone and what feel that they are doing that really, really works as opposed to what they did before. Awesome job, guys. Okay, next team. Last, last, uh, we have last, one last scenario. We got to gotta kind of go fast in this. Okay, you're, Siggy, you're the, you're the mustache. You're the man. Okay, Julie, here's Mine. your thing. Here's your... Um, uh, Oh, uh, there's so many left, and I, uh, uh, um, <laughs> I can't pick which one. There's so many good ones. Okay, all right, I'm gonna do this driving one. Okay, I like driving. Okay, you complain that your husband only calls you while he's driving. It's not an optical connection, and and you feel like a side thought while he's navigating himself through traffic rather than a priority in his life. In other words, you know, he doesn't like call you. He only calls you while he's doing something else, which is driving, which makes you feel less than um, a priority in his life. Okay, go. So surprised. You're on that, honey. Oh, watch the road. Watch it, man. (laughs) How's your day? Um, Oh, come on. The pointer is there for a reason. Are you sure you should be on the phone? Wait, wait, wait. Hey, babe. How's it going? How's your day been? I, you know what? I I, I was oh, trying come to come on. That's not a right lane. Right. So I think you shouldn't be on the phone right now. It's not. No, good. no. This is a great time because I'm just I'm just driving. Yeah. Oh, I can hear it. I hear it all the time. You're always driving when we're talking. And, and sorry, and sorry, I missed that because the uh, GPS went off. What, yeah, what I know you're going over bridges. <laughs> this is this is you're through. You're oh, going, hold, hold, on, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're commuting through mountains. I get it. You can't hear me and that's probably it's breaking up so i can't hear you i don't want to talk on the phone in the car <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> oh, world saying... War three. oh my gosh <laughs> you're saying okay, so, uh, did you hear okay. that did that even come through i'm not hearing you hun i'm gonna get off the phone I'm okay, hanging on the phone. You want to talk on the phone? Yeah, no, I, that's what I want. I'm hanging on the phone. <laughs> you want to talk on the phone. <laughs> okay, so hold on, Julie. I just want to analyze your emotions right now because, I mean, this isn't even real. And already I'm like uh, every fiber of my. <clears throat> but what's your. T- t- speak. What are you feeling right now? I'm so annoyed and so frustrated, and disappointed, and a little hurt that I. I don't, I don't even know why he's calling me only so I could hear him complain that he can't hear me and yell at traffic. Like, I don't understand. I feel like he should just be listening to the, a podcast or the radio. Like, why is he calling me now? So he can tick it off his list. So he feels like. You'll exactly. I feel like another item scratched off a list. Right. Right. Thanks. 
Mm. <laughs> mm. Do you have any comments from anybody, Siri? Um, no, people are just laughing. There's a lot of like emojis being sent. Okay, okay. yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, I wanted to see if there was, they want the subtlety here. The subtlety of this um, situation is that you, Julie, the, the wife is right, right? She's right and he's wrong. So being right, this is something we always do. It's like when, especially, in other words, if you're right about something, it's even harder to connect than it is when you're, you know, it's a, a, it could go either way. But here it's so obvious that Julie is, that the wife is right and the husband is wrong. He, he's being, he's really crushing her, her love for him. He, she's, he's shooing her away and shutting her out. It's, 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 he's wrong. So when your husband is wrong about something so crystal clear and you are right about it, and even it, it, in an opposite directions, you could even hear him say, yeah, when I'm talking to my boss, he's always on the phone and I don't understand him. So he can be, you know, mad about the exact same thing and think, feel right about it in his, you know, when it's not, when it's happening to him, but when it's happening to you, he can be blinded to it. This is just normal humanity. But when we are right about something, it's very hard to get over that in order to connect. It's hard to be motivated to want to connect with, you see how upset and angry um, and hurt Julie, Julie, the wife was. So um, in this scenario, the best thing to do is to perhaps, and you have to know yourself, you have to know your husband, but when you are so right and so upset about something, it might be, and if you have to know yourself, writing a letter to him uh, that maybe you send or you don't send, writing notes to yourself, writing in a journal, just p outlining the whole scenario of what's upsetting you. So in this case, you know, I feel less than, I feel that I'm not, you know, because if, if she tries to communicate that directly to him without her processing it herself first, it's probably not going to go well because you're so right. So, you know, the reason this upsets me, one, I feel unheard. Two, I feel like an after effect. Three, I feel like not a priority in your life. Four, I feel um, angry that you would, you wouldn't want to be with me. And that's a painful part. It's like, you know, yes, he's acting in a bad way, but the fact that he, he doesn't have the desire to want to connect in a deeper way and is happy with a communication where he's interrupted every two seconds, that's very painful. So you write it all down so you can get a clear picture of what's going on emotionally with yourself and what your needs are and what, how they're not being met and what you're, what's upsetting you. Then wait three days if you can, you know, just wait and process it, whatever. Then go back and write out what, you want it, how you want to communicate it with them in a way that's going to be effective. So right now, Julie, we're going to go back to you. And I want you to pretend that you did all that, figured out all of what was upsetting you, then figured out what you want to say to him. And the things that you want to say to him, again, from your heart to his heart, express how you feel, your emotions. And again, for those who are watching, you want to sort of see if this makes, you know, before we wanted to be like, oh, get me away, even though it was interesting. And yeah, conflict sells in the movie industry. Okay. So we get that. But in terms of wanting to be cozy with them, that's kind of like a feel and a tone that we want to examine here. Okay, Julie, you're on. Okay. Um, hey, I, um, I bet you're wondering why I sent you to voicemail the last couple of days. Yeah, I, I, I just want to make sure. Can you hear me okay right now on this connection? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Oh, you're 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 in the flats right now. Okay. So it might be Julie that you wait to say. Let's just talk when you get home. Let's, oh, let's okay. Make this conversation so we don't have to have this live. conversation. Yes, okay. yes, yeah, yeah. And also, we're out of time, so you have to do it in like five seconds, standing on okay. one foot with your hands tied behind your back. Go. I'm so glad that you, you were able to make time for me at home and not in the car. It means. Yeah, so of course. I always do. I always make time for you. You do. And I know that you check in because really? you're thinking of me. And Are you every day on the drive home? I know that means so much to me. You know what though? The drive home call. I'm finding it really stressful because I can hardly hear you. You know what? It's those canyons. It's like not even me. It's the canyons that do that. And I, I kind of, I think, I think maybe the, the calling me from the car thing is making me feel like a little bit of a, like a third rate citizen, because I feel like an after well, my intentions are good. They're totally wonderful. And your heart is beautiful. And you're the man I married my King. So I just wanted to, I just want to let you know that because you're so understanding that, that it would be better for us to communicate if you're not calling me from the car. Yeah. So I mean, about doing safety. 
If I'm your king, king. then of course. <laughs> yeah. If I'm what? Your king, then. Oh, your king. <laughs> okay, we, that's all we have time for, ladies. And wait, everybody else, come back on. Let's do, do your names once again. You guys were amazing. I learned a lot in this show. You guys are just like, right, you know, how you communicated honestly and openly and whatever, and then how you switched it around. It just was really gorgeous. Okay, say your names again. These are the Rachel comedy Drummond. team. Say it again. I'm sorry, I interrupted uh, you. Thanks, I'm Rachel Drummond. Siggy Rabbit. Taylor Loeb. Julie Mann. Those are our comedy ladies. They are amazing. You guys did a great job. And now we all know how to connect deeply with our husbands. Okay. Lots of love, everybody. This is Leah Richheimer for the Ladies Talk Show. We'll see you next time. Here's the thing, ladies. If you don't subscribe, you may miss out and you're going to miss some great content. So you need to either like us or follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, on Torah Anytime, on YouTube, or go right to our website, www.ladiestalkshow.com and fill in a subscription button. And then you'll get every week an update on exactly what's happening. And if you do that, oh, by the way, if you subscribe on our website, you also get 10 tips to have a great relationship. Don't miss it. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot.